Hello friends, welcome to To The Point. In today's session, let's discuss about Bhakti movement in medieval India. So we already studied about the Bhakti cult in Tamil Nadu during the 7th and 8th centuries. The Saivet Nayanmars and Vaishnavit Alvars, they preached Bhakti cult under the Pallavas, Pandyas as well as Cholas. But the spread of Bhakti movement in medieval India, it is a different kind. So this medieval Bhakti movement, it was the direct result of influence of the spread of Islam in India. Monotheism or which is also known as belief in one God, equality and brotherhood of man and rejection of rituals and class divisions are the distinctive characteristics of Islam. The Islamic ideas, it created a profound impact on the religious leaders of the period. And moreover, the preaching of Sufi teachers, they shaped the thinking of Bhakti reformers like Ramananda, Kabir and Nanak. Sufism. Sufism was a liberal reform movement within Islam. It had its origin in Persia and spread into India during 11th century. The first Sufi saint called Sheikh Ismail of Lahore, he started preaching his ideas. And the most famous of Sufi saints of India was Kwaza Muinuddin Chisti. So he settled in Ajmer which became the center of his activities and he had a number of disciples who are called Sufis of the Chisti order. Another well-known Sufi saint was Bahauddin Jakaria. So he came under the influence of another famous mystic Shihabuddin Shuhravardi. So his branch of Sufi saints was known as the Sufis of Shuhravardi order. So like this, many Sufi saints emerged and among them another Sufi saint was Nizamuddin Aulia. He belonged to the Chisti order and he was a mighty spiritual force. This Sufi saints are revered even today by not only Muslims but by a large number of Hindus also. Their thorns have become popular places of pilgrimage for both the communities for both Hindus as well as Muslims. Sufism stressed the elements of love and devotion as effective means of the realization of God. Love of God meant love of humanity and so the Sufis believe service to humanity it was a tantamount to service to God. In Sufism, self-discipline was considered an essential condition to gain knowledge of God by sense of perception whereas the orthodox muslims emphasize external conduct the sufis lay stress on inner purity while the orthodox believe in blind observance of rituals the sufis consider love and devotion as the only means of attaining salvation and according to them one must have the guidance of pir or guru without which Spiritual development is impossible. Sufism, it also inculcated a spirit of tolerance among its followers. And other ideas emphasized by Sufism are meditation, good actions, repentance for sins, performance of prayers and pilgrimages, fasting, charity and suppression of passions by ascetic practices. This liberal and unorthodox futures of Sufism had a profound influence on medieval Bhakti saints. And in the later period, Akbar, who was a Mughal emperor, he appreciated Sufi doctrines which gave a shape to religious outlook and religious policies. When the Sufi movement was becoming popular in India, about the same time the Bhakti cult was gaining strength among the Hindus. 
the two parallel movements based on the doctrines of love and selfless devotion it contributed a great deal to bringing the two communities closer together and however this trend also did not last long bhakti movement so in the 9th century shankaracharya he started a hindu revivalist movement giving a new orientation to hinduism he was born in kaladi in kerala his doctrine of advaita or monism was too abstract to appeal to the common man so there was a reaction against advaita concept of nirguna brahman which means god without attributes with the emergence of the idea of saguna brahman saguna brahman means god with attributes and nirguna brahman means god without attributes and around 12th century ramanuja who was born at shri perambudur near modern chennai he preached vishishta advaita so according to him god is saguna brahman that is god with attributes the creative process and all objects in creation are real but they are not illusionary as it was held by shankaracharya therefore god soul matter are real but god is the inner substance and the rest are his attributes he also advocated pravati marga or the path of self surrender to god he invited down trodden to vaishnavism around 13th century madhava from kannada region he propagated dvaita or dualism of jivatma and paramatma so according to his philosophy the world is not an illusion but it is a reality god soul matter they are unique in nature nimbarka and vallabhacharya they were also the preachers of vaishnavite bhakti around the telangana region surdas he was the disciple of vallabhacharya and he popularized krishna cult in north india mirabai she was a great devotee of krishna and she became popular in rajasthan for her bhajans tulsidas was a worshipper of rama and he composed the famous rama charita manasa so this is a hindi version of ramayana so in the 14th and 15th centuries ramananda kabir and nanak they remained great apostles of bhakti cult so they drew inspiration from old masters but they showed a new path they helped the common people to shed age old superstitions and to attain salvation through bhakti or pure devotion unlike the early reformers they were not linked with any particular religions creed and did not believe in rituals and ceremonies they condemned polytheism and believed in one god they also denounced all forms of idolatry they strongly believed in bhakti as the only means of salvation they also emphasized the fundamental unity of all religions ramananda ramananda he was born at allahabad and he was originally a follower of ramanuja later he founded his own sect and he preached his principles in hindi at banaras and agra he was a worshipper of lord rama and he was the first to employ the vernacular medium to propagate his ideas simplification of worship and emancipation of people from the traditional caste rules were his two important contributions to bhakti movement he opposed the caste system and chose his disciples from all sections of society disregarding caste his disciples were kabir he was a muslim weaver and rai dasa he was a cobbler and sena he was a barber sadna he was a butcher and dhana he was a jet farmer and narahari 
he was a goldsmith and pipa he was a rajput prince kabir among the disciples of ramananda the most famous was kabir he was born near banaras to a brahmin widow he was brought up by a muslim couple who were weavers by profession kabir possessed an inquiring mind and while in banaras he learned much about hinduism he became familiar with islamic teachings also and ramananda initiated him into the higher knowledge of hindu and muslim religions and philosophical ideas kabir's object was to reconcile hindus and muslims and establish harmony between the two sects that is hindus and muslims he denounced idolatry worship and rituals and laid great emphasis on equality of man before god he emphasized the essential oneness of all religions by describing hindus and muslims as parts of the same clay so to him rama and allah temple and mosque were same he regarded devotion to god as an effective means of salvation and he urged that to achieve this one must have a pure heart free from cruelty dishonesty hypocrisy and insincerity he is regarded as the greatest of the mystic saints and his followers are called kabir pantis guru nanak so guru nanak is another well known saint preacher of the medieval period he is said to be the founder of sikh religion and he is a disciple of kabir he was born in talavandi near lahore and he denounced caste distinction and rituals like bathing in holy rivers his conception of religion was highly practical and sternly ethical he exhorted people to give up selfishness falsehood and hypocrisy and to lead a life of truth honesty and kindness abide pure amid the impurities of the world was one of his famous saying his life was dedicated to establishing harmony between hindus and muslims chaitanya was another well known saint and reformer of bengal who popularized the krishna cult he renounced the world he became an ascetic and he wandered all over the country chaitanya proclaimed the universal brotherhood of man and he condemned all distinction that is based on religion and caste he emphasized love and peace and he showed great sympathy to the suffering of other people especially that of poor and the weak he believed that through love and devotion song and dance a devotee can feel the presence of god he accepted disciples from all classes and caste and his teachings are widely followed in bengal even today gnana deva he was the founder of bhakti movement in maharashtra in 13th century and it was called maharashtra dharma he wrote a commentary of bhagavad gita called gnaneshwari namadeva preached the gospel of lab he opposed idol worship and priestly domination he also opposed the caste system and in 16th century ekanta he opposed caste distinction and sympathetic towards the lower caste he composed many lyrics and his bhajans and kirtans were famous another bhakti saint of maharashtra was tukaram he was a contemporary of shivaji and he was responsible for creating a background of maratha nationalism he opposed all social distinctions importance of the bhakti movement the importance of bhakti movement was very great various preachers 
they spoke and wrote in regional languages so the bhakti movement it provided an impetus for the development of regional languages such as hindi marathi bengali kannada and so on so through this languages they made direct appeal to the masses as the caste system was condemned by the bhakti saints the lower classes were rise to a position of great importance the importance of women in society was also increased because the bhakti movement gave equal importance to women so moreover the bhakti movement it gave to the people a simple religion without complicated rituals they were required to show sincere devotion to god the new idea of a life of charity and service to fellow people develop so in the next session let's discuss about vijayanagara empire thank you